Morning. Um, this session, this quick session today, is going to be based around uh, Whiting's model of information processing. Uh, this is an extension now of the information processing work you've been doing in your skill acquisition section. Uh, so, so far you've got working memory, Badley and Hitch, uh, and now we're going to look at Whiting's model. Now, it's pretty roughly drawn here, but the diagram itself potentially looks a little bit complicated, but I want to take you through the concept first. Uh, and then we're going to go back and we're going to go through a worked example and then hopefully you'll be able to answer the questions comfortably on the sheet in front of you. So we're going to go through it stage by stage. Um, as I say, just in terms of the concept, the theory itself, what the different elements mean within it, and then we'll go back and do a working, uh, working example. So initially this first part shouldn't cause you any issues. So this is our input, input from the display. So remember the display is everything that's happening around us, the environment that sits in the middle of it all. Okay, so initially we are receiving an awful, amount, a lot, uh, an awful lot of information that's coming in from the environment that, that, that's there to be acted upon should we choose to act upon it. Obviously then it's entering in through the sense organs. So we've talked about those before. So we've talked in particular in terms of auditory and visual. We've also talked about that idea around proprioception. Okay, touch, equilibrium and kinesthesis. So all that information is coming through the sense organs that essentially now is going to inform what we do. Now, as that information comes in, it first moves into one of the first mechanisms. So these three mechanisms are the key elements to Whiting's model, and this is where your focus needs to be. So, perceptual mechanism. Well, perception, we've looked at that before, is essentially the, the interpretation of information. So, what you're going to do with that information as it comes in. So, the information is being passed through the sense organs into that perceptual mechanism. And if we go back to think about the components of perception itself, we have detection, comparison, and recognition. But remember, it's just around stimulus. So detection of a stimulus that's arrived from the sense organs, a comparison of that stimulus within the long-term memory, and then a recognition of that stimulus as to whether we've seen it before or we haven't. Okay, so that's what's happening within the perceptual mechanism. As a result of that, we're interpreting that information, and then that information is being passed on to the central mechanism, which is the translatory mechanism. Okay, now the translatory mechanism is designed then to use the information that's been passed on, the detection of that stimulus, the uh, comparison of the stimulus, and then the recognition of the stimulus to make a decision. Okay, this is the situation we find ourselves in. This is the information that we have. What are we going to do? What's going to be our response? Once that decision is made within the translatory mechanism, it's then passed on to the effector mechanism. Now, the effector mechanism is essentially the mechanism that fires the muscles. It's about creating the motor program. So once the decision has been made in the translatory mechanism, it is then passed the effector mechanism, and it's essentially converted into a motor program, a series of impulses that are going to be sent to the muscles. So the effective mechanism then, once that motor program has been formed, then passes those impulses into the muscular system for the response, the decision to be affected, to be put into effect. So the muscular system puts into effect and then we have an output data. So output data is simply what's happened, okay? The result of it. So what do we see? What has happened as a result of our of our motor program, of our movement. And then that is all tied up at the bottom with feedback data. Was it successful? Was, did it fail? Was it the correct response? Was it the incorrect response? And that feedback then obviously would inform the long-term memory in the future. So that's a real whistle-stop tour of Whiting's model. So why don't we do it through a, a worked example? So I'm going to use a simple pass in rugby. So we have input, input from the display. So I'm the player and I'm in possession of the ball. So the input I have is essentially the field, where I am on the field, where my teammates are, where the, uh, where the opposition are, what kind of grip do I have on the ball, the space that I have to run into and so on. So that's the, the huge amount of input that I have within that rugby match. Now my sense organs, in particular my, my visual organ, Okay, my visual um, sense picks up that there is a one defender between me and the try line. Okay, but my auditory organ also picks up that I have a teammate 
on my left hand side. So visually I've picked up that there is a defender, just one defender between me and the try line, but I've also, in terms of auditory, I recognise that I've got a teammate on my left hand side. I could also, through touch, through pressure, recognise that I have a good grip on the ball, I'm carrying the ball in two hands, and obviously I feel balanced through equilibrium, so I recognise that in this position here, I'm in a position to try and perhaps use the defender, hold the defender to maybe pass the ball. And that comes through to this part here. So I've detected the stimulus in front of me. So I've got a few stimuli to think about here. I've got the defender in front of me and I've got my teammate to the left. Now that's the detection part. I also have detected I've got a good grip on the ball and I've got good balance. Okay, I'm happy with my equilibrium. So I've recognized that there's, there's a detection, beg your pardon, of those stimuli. I've compared those stimuli to previous situations where I've experienced those stimuli and then I've recognized that I have been in this situation before where I have a defender in front of me the only defender left before the try line and myself I've got an attacker a teammate on my left shoulder I've got good balance and a good grip on the ball so all that information is sent to the decision making process and the decision making process having rec received the information that we've recognized we've been in this position before and this is what we did last time makes the decision now you're going to draw the defender and just before you get to the defender you're going to pass the ball that's the decision so we're going to run out the defender because he's the only one left i've got a good grip on the ball i've got good balance i've got a teammate to my left so I'm going to run right at the defender. I don't have to try and beat him. I don't have to try and dodge. And just as I get to him just a little bit beforehand, I'm going to pass the ball. Because in the past, they've been committed to the tackle of me, but I've released the ball before he's tackled me and my teammate has gone through to score a try. So there's the decision. So now that decision moves to the effector mechanism. The effector mechanism now creates a motor program that essentially prepares my body as I get closer to the uh, defender to move my my arms at the shoulder from here to there okay and then it also prepares my hands to release the ball okay so I'm gonna my motor program gets me to run right at the defender and just before it's preparing my arms and as I get close the motor program is going to allow my arms to go from here to there and release the ball and sure enough those impulses arrive at the muscular system and that's the very thing that happens. Now the output data, okay? Now the output data at this point then is what physically happens. So what happens is the ball leaves my hands and goes into the hands of my teammate who goes on to score a try. The feedback, well, I could look at a couple of types of feedback here. I could think about intrinsic feedback. So that kinesthesis, how did it feel? And often you know when you are preparing to produce a movement that actually during the movement and just after without even seeing that final success, the extrinsic element of the feedback, that I can feel that actually it was a good pass, I feel like I passed at the right time and it's gone backwards. So that's my intrinsic data, that kinesthesis, but I also have extrinsic data, almost like knowledge of results, so I can see that my teammate has received the ball, I can see that the defender has tackled me and been committed to the tackle, and I can see my, uh, my teammate go over the try line to score. And then that will continue to feed my perceptual mechanism and translatory mechanism next time I find myself in that situation. So that's in essence how uh, Whiting's model worked. Now have a look at your sheet. There are elements that you could fill in and take this uh, video back and just go through different sections, put in your worked example, and then I'll wait to have a go at the additional worked examples that are on that sheet.